Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning over here. Good morning over here. We are here at Christ Universal Temple's Sunday morning worship experience. Thank all of you in the temple for joining us. It's always an exciting time when we have face-to-face -face contact and we can see each other and feel each other and love each other. And that doesn't exclude you, live streamers. We feel you. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your being here. We appreciate even more that we are all going to stop, take a moment, click, and send this lesson to someone else. They'll be glad you did. It's going to be someone you know and love and care about. Don't leave them out. Click and send, and let's share Christ Universal Temple. Happy spring. It's spring. First day. Feels good. We are, spring has sprung, and so shall we. We shall spring into faith and love and action. We shall spring into faith and vision and courage, as our leader often said. Let's spring into spring. We begin and we continue the Lenten series. The Lenten series crafted through Happy Life for Lent. Happy Life for Lent. And our lesson today from our senior minister, the Reverend Dr. Derek B. Wells is, New Life. I wanted you to be sure and hear it, so I gave you a pause so you'd be ready for me. New Life. <laughs> it's good to have a senior minister on your right hand and your left hand. So then, let us begin this lesson, this service, this praise as we always do in prayer. There's so much to be prayerful about, so many people to be prayerful for, so many good reasons to be grateful that we can pray to God and he can hear us. So we say thanks, God. Thank you, God, for Christ Universal Temple. Thank you that we can come through these open doors and feel the strength and the love that we need to spread into the world. The world will be a better place because of Christ Universal Temple because we come and we pray and we send our love across all the dark places. Thank you, God, for March. Thank you, God, that March is the recognition month for women's history. Thank you, God, for women in March. And thank you, God, for our senior minister who curated Happy Life. So we get to take Happy Life moments every day to live how we say we want to live this better life. So God, we come. We come to start this lesson in Happy Life, this new life. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for our learning. We thank you for this beloved community. Thank you, God. And in this beloved community, we feel God. So thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Oh, let the praise begin. <laughs> Good morning, CUT. Stand to your feet this morning. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Come on, make some noise if you're glad to be here this morning. Welcome to our online view viewers. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Can we sing this song together? Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy. I 
praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. And I bow my head. I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. I lift my hands. Yes, I lift my hands to you, God. I praise you, Lord. And I bow my head. I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. that God is a good God he's the greatest power and he will never be defeated come on can you just say that this morning and say God is the greatest power God is the greatest power and we will never be defeated we will never be defeated hallelujah he's the greatest power hallelujah can we just take a minute to just magnify God right now can we just make his name great in this room Come on, think about the goodness of our Lord this morning. I shall rise. I shall be. I shall be. Say, I shall go. I shall go. In victory. In victory. No weapon form. No weapon form. Against me. Against me. Will Will ever overtake me. Overtake Let's do that again. Say, I shall rise. I shall rise. I shall be. I shall be. I will go. I will go. In victory. In victory. Weapon for. No weapon for. Against me. Against me. Will ever. Will ever. Overtake me. Overtake me. Because God is the greatest. And because God is the greatest power. And we shall never. We shall never. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. And because God is the greatest. And because God is the greatest power. Is the greatest power. We 
shall never, we shall never, never be defeated, never be defeated. Because God, and because God is the greatest power, is the greatest power. We shall never, we shall never, never be defeated, never be defeated. And because God, and because God yeah, is the greatest power, is the greatest power. I shall rise, I shall rise, I shall be, I shall be, I will go, I will go, victory, victory, weapon for, weapon for, against me, against me, will ever, will ever, overtake me, overtake me, oh and because God is the greatest, say that, and because Because we know he's the greatest power. All we have to do is rejoice in that. Can you clap your hands, wave your hand, and rejoice that God is the greatest power? There is no reason to fear. There is no reason. He's the greatest power. So can we lift him higher this morning? Come on, say, lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. Say God is exalted. God is exalted. Will never be defeated. Never be defeated. And will never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say we lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. God, you're exalted in this place, God. God. Is exalted. And will never be defeated. Never be defeated. And will never be defeated. Come on, say. Never be defeated. Say we lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. Say God is exalted. God is exalted. And will never be defeated. Say we we'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say we lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. God is exalted. God is exalted. And we we'll never defeated. Never be defeated. Never defeated. Never be defeated. Say we lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. God be exalted. God is exalted. Cause we we'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. And we we'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say lift him up higher. Make some noise in the room this morning. Come on, do I have any witnesses that can stand on your feet this morning? If you know God is exalted this morning, and we will never be defeated. Come on, he's exalted over your problems, over every circumstance, over every illness. God is exalted. Say, we'll never be defeated. Say, we'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. Defeated, never be defeated. Even when I feel defeated, never be defeated. I will never be defeated. Never be defeated. I will never, 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 never be defeated. I will never be defeated. Never be defeated. I will never be defeated. Never be defeated. Because God is a God, God. Never be defeated. He's a strong. Come on, make some noise right there. Say, lift him up higher. Lift him up 
right there. Come on, clap your hands with confidence and know that God has it all in control. Come on, how many know he's a God that never changed? If he did it before, he can do what? He can do it again. You remain the same. Hallelujah, God. How many know God never changes? His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. You are the Lord, you remain the same. Come on, can we sing that? You will never ever change. You are the Lord. Say, you are the Lord. You remain the same. You remain Come on, it's a new song. Can you sing it with us? You say, you will never. Say, you will never. Sing it together, church. Say you will never ever change. Say you. Clap your hands all over the room right there. Come on, for the God that never changes and he never fails. Come on, are you glad about that this morning? That's good news this morning. That's good news this morning. Come on, clap your hands like you're glad about it. Come on, how many champions do we have in the room? Come on, it says we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Come on, the spirit of Christ lives inside of us. And so that means that we will never be defeated. God's power is the greatest power. Come on, clap your hands.
history, women's history. Here at Christ Universal Temple, we stand on a firm and solid foundation of the founder of this institution, the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. There are decades and decades and generations and generations of those who have since come and taught and trained and nurtured men and women to go and do good in the world. The legacy of the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman is history. Take a look at what legacy looks like. Hello, CUT family. It's Takoya, AKA Dr. Williams. Um, Johnny Coleman baby, former Grow Power mentee. I finished up a surgical fellowship here in Chicago doing what I love to do best, which is uh, operating and taking care of patients. Um, and right now working on some clinical research in the area of uh, racial disparities and breast reconstruction surgery um, at a major hospital downtown. Um, one woman of principle, a woman of just impossible elegance, is the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman, who taught me about faith and perseverance. Running your own race, staying in your own lane, moving at your own pace, not worrying about people who are perceivably moving past you or moving quicker than you. Remembering that God is all that there is, the one source, the one light, the one power. I'm Kelly Fair, founder of Polish Public Girls Mentoring Program, but most importantly, I'm a Johnny Coleman baby. When I think about the impact of things that I've learned from Reverend Coleman, one of the phrases that meant the most to me that she used to say was, every man, and probably every woman, is a minister. And for me being in the mentoring business with Polished Pebbles, that means that my mentoring, my teaching, the awesomeness and the wisdom of God can come to me in many ways. Not just me giving it and imparting it to young people, Young people could be sharing wisdom and God is expressing through them. It could be people on team members on our staff. If you're in a leadership position, it could come from a stranger. So the important thing that I've always learned from that phrase is to stay open and to receptive to however God may show up because I don't want to miss what God has for me and how he's guiding me. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Dawn Collier and I am here to talk to you today about a spiritual principle that I have used throughout my life. That principle is the divinity of man. For me that means that I am a spiritual being first. A spiritual being having a human experience and I have at my disposal the divine ideas of life, love, power, substance, and wisdom. I've used these principles to accomplish becoming a physician. I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist. I'm a businesswoman with a new candle line coming out. I create surgical attire and I'm also an author where I have created a book for young girls to help them develop self-confidence and positive body image. So all of these things I've been able to accomplish as a student here at Christ Universal Temple using the principle of the divinity of man. Hello, my name is Lauren Knox and I am the video director at Christ Universal Temple. In addition to directing the live stream services every Sunday, I also am an assistant location manager for the TV show Chicago PD. Um, being at Christ Universal Temple um, has allowed me to focus on the value and the power of thought in my life and career. Um, being born in the month of June, my imagination is always running rampant, so it's important for me to control my thoughts, uh, focus on abundance, prosperity, perfect health, and perfect peace. Practicing this principle every day throughout my life and career has allowed me to be able to put out visuals that inspire and uplift those around me. My 
My name is Lauren Yancey and I'm the youth director here at CUT. I was born and raised here and as a Johnny Coleman baby, it is an honor to give back to the same youth ministries that I grew up with. In addition to being the youth director here, I am also a school counselor. So six days a week, I get to impart the lessons that I have learned here on children, teens, and young adults. And now you have just seen a few of the women who have come through Christ Universal Temple. God designed and spiritually fed, and we invite you to keep the legacy going. That's our beloved community that you just saw. We saw wonderful, wonderful pieces of our community. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is our appointment with God time. And so, with all of the excitement that we just enjoyed, all of the goodness, we can readily turn within to touch the hymn. We can do that. Hmm, our appointment with God. Let's prepare for this important moment, this important opportunity. And I'd like to begin by asking God just to clear our thoughts of any concerns, any so-called worries, hmm, any so-called frustrations. And right now, let's exercise our dominion and authority. Yeah, directing all of our thoughts to be about God. If you can, those of you who are watching, streaming, close your eyes and let your shoulders relax and take a deep breath so that your thoughts will be about God, how God provides for each of us, how God allows us to have dominion, have dominion. Silently speak the word, God, God, God. And as you're doing that, Open your mind and your heart. Open your mind and your heart so it connects with that indwelling presence, that God. We are children of the living God. And it is so awesome that this morning we can celebrate. We can celebrate God's daughters. We can celebrate the women. We can do that. Thank you, God. Thank you so very much. Women have taught us much, taught us so much in the Bible. Hagar's prayer for water reveals to us that God will provide our needs. Hagar, who was absolutely in what we would call a challenge position, yet she prayed. And she taught us, as women do. And then Miriam's prayer of praise reminds us that every triumph is the Lord's. That woman came, that woman who, who was a sister of Aaron and Moses, and, and had so much to, to, to see and to, to do and to get engaged in, but she praised God reminding us that every triumph is the Lord's. That, that's what women can do. We were taught by Deborah. Deborah's prayer of God's glory demonstrates how God works in us, great and small. God is continuously working in us, and, and Deborah helped us to understand that. And then Hannah's prayer, oh yeah, Hannah's prayer for a child invites each of us to bring to our heart's desire, to bring our heart's desire to God, to bring our heart's desire to God. What, what more important lesson, dear God, thank you for Hannah. Thank you for helping Hannah help us to know that we can bring you our heart's desires. And then there's Proverbs 31, dear God. Yeah. 
There we learn that a woman who fears, who respects, who reverences the Lord, a woman who's in awe of God, there's so much fruit that she can bear. Fruit of obedience. Fruit of obedience as she honors God. That's what, that's what we know. Women can bring forth so much fruit as we honor God. And, and there is, there's love that flows out of that honoring God. There's love that flows out of as we honor God. Women, we are absolutely being that love vessel that projects out to all around us. And, and, and as we are fearing God, reverencing God, respecting God, we are our good stewards. Women, we, we are good stewards over all that God has given to us. And we are grateful for our blessings so, so we can be trusted with more. Yes, as we honor God, women, we can truly know who we are. We can. We are God's daughters. We are manifestations of the Most High. And all those around us are our friends, our husbands, our partners. Celebrate us. And they can. For God has celebrated us. God has celebrated us. As is was taught by our brother Jesus. You see, oh yes God, thank you for my brother Jesus. For having him help us understand. It wasn't about Jesus being right. It was about him being righteous. For, for there were things that Jesus did that taught us the value of women. The first miracle went to a woman. The first Samaritan convert was a woman. Women, come on, let us look and see that everything points to our very value. The first person clearly told by Jesus that he was the Messiah was a woman. The first news of the resurrection, of new life, hmm, went to a woman. And women were commissioned to spread the word. Women were commissioned to tell the news of the resurrection to the disciples. Oh God, thank you, for we know this was all in a culture where women were not valued, but Jesus valued them. So this morning, God, we're going to celebrate ourselves. We're going to celebrate ourselves. And each woman who hears my voice, listen as I read. Celebrate you. Celebrate you. Celebrate you. You are worthy celebrating. You are worth everything. You are unique. In the whole world, there is only one you. There is only one person with your talents, your experiences, your gifts. Oh, my sisters, no one can take your place. God created only you, precious in his sight. And you have immense potential to love, to care, to create, to grow, to sacrifice. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter your age. Let it go. Let all of those facts go and know that you are God's child. You are God's daughter. Hmm. Accept you. Forgive you. Love you in spite of everything. Love yourself and nourish the seeds within you. Celebrate you as all will celebrate you as they see you celebrating you. Begin now, start anew, give yourself a new birth. Today, you are you, and that is all you need to be. You are you, that is all you need to be. Today is a new beginning, a new thing, a new life, and you deserve this new life. Celebrate you, my sisters.
God has, Jesus did, you can. And so it is.
And so I invite you, I invite you, I invite you to end this vibration. Call up something for which you are grateful. It may have been your healing. It may have been your breakthrough. It may have been a new home. It may have been uh, a blessing for a loved one. Call that up in this vibration. Because what I want you to do is to uh, know how to connect the gratitude of what God has done for you to the energy of this state that we're experiencing right now. And once you catch hold to that thing for which you are grateful, I want you to now project forward into the thing that you've been hoping for. And I want you to connect that thing to this vibration. For in this feeling state that we're in right now, what we're feeling is the activity of the Holy Spirit. We're in the vibration of God's goodness. And as we bring the gratitude of the past into the hope for the future, this vibration builds the bridge that you cross over into the manifestation. And so I want you to know what it feels like when you have what you've been hoping for. God is so good. God is so good. And we rejoice for your goodness and mercy toward us. Amen and amen. My Lord. Goodness gracious. Help me say thank you to the music ministry of Christ Universal Temple. That's unfair, man. That's unfair. Man, you can't put that under nobody like that, man. That's unfair. I was feeling, you know, I was, I was feeling cool. And they just brought me to the place of uncouthness. My God, that is so good. And that's on top of the prayer that Reverend Jackie prayed. Man. And I don't have to tell you this because I believe you already know it. But in the same way, that the 28 days in February in which we celebrate Black History Month, in the same way that those 28 days are inadequate to capture the essence and excellence and history of black folk on the planet, in the same way that that month is inadequate to capture. We get the celebration. I'm just pointing out that it's inadequate. Not that it's wrong, it's just inadequate. In much the same way that that is inadequate. You can't have a celebration of the creation that God made and called woman and cram it into 38 days. It's just inadequate. I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just pointing out that it's inadequate. And so what do we do once we recognize that something is inadequate? We refuse to settle for what does not work. And so I wanna encourage each and every one of us, wherever we are on the planet, to renew our commitment to celebrate the creation 
that God gifted us with. Not a single solitary one of us is here lest we come through the vessel God called woman. And so I want us to make a commitment to celebrate and honor and uplift the vehicle and channel that God called woman, not just in March, but each and every day. Why? Because she is worthy. Oh my God. I do have to say thank you to Sandy Lynn for um, pioneering this idea. And I want to say thank you to Lauren Knox, who we saw in the video, and Yubi Torado uh, for adding their experience and expertise uh, to make sure that we would have, as a part of our worship experience, the opportunity to, at least in, in audio and visual, have an opportunity to recognize and celebrate uh, Women's History Month. Um, but our, our, our foundation, our foundation requires, right? Our, our very foundation requires that it be a part um, of, of, the, of the DNA and essence of what CUT will always be, regardless of who gives leadership to it, right? It may be a, a male or female standing here. The foundation is what it is, right? And the foundation does not change. You may have to bolster it. You may have to seal a crack here or there, but the foundation is what it is. And so we rejoice and celebrate and give thanks for God, to God, for giving the idea to our founder, the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. We rejoice and give thanks. <sighs> Amen. Y'all can do better than that. Come on, man. Come on. Don't act, don't act, don't act like, like where, where your life converged with hers. It didn't, it didn't create a, a shift for you. Amen. 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 Give honor to where honor is due. Oh, my God. Thank you. Man, they uh, really did that thing this morning, all of you all. You all know to have church. You all know how to have church, Reverend Fred. You all know how to have church. I can't, I can't even run, man. And so I think I've got it back together now. I can go forward, I believe. <laughs> and of course, so we're obviously, um, as uh, Sandy Lynn shared with us uh, earlier, uh, we're in the Lenten season and uh, we're working through uh, Live Happy for Lent. Uh, just a quick um, refresher, the Lenten season is the opportunity that each and every one of us has to focus on the spiritual work of prayer and fasting. And so this 40-day period is our opportunity to, enter, to center ourselves in the intentional flow of God's good. It's our opportunity to reconnect our awareness of the oneness and ground ourselves in the truth of our being. It's our opportunity to uh, recollect and reconnect to the things of spirit as Georgiana Tree West wrote. And we know for this community, uh, the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman taught us that Lent um, can be approached through the acronym of uh, taking up the action to eliminate negative thinking. And so while many people give up cake and ice cream and, and meat and, and cigarettes and, 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 you know, on a good day, the weed. Um, <laughs> well, no, I know not you, right? I know not you, and, you know. But it is an herb. I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm just saying, um, you know. But I, I want to stay on track because I, I do feel good. <laughs> But uh, Dr. Coleman taught us that um, the activity that, that we perhaps gain the most from during the Lenten season is the activity of eliminating negative thinking. Is that right? 
And so this 40-day period becomes our opportunity to do the mental and spiritual work that's necessary to eliminate negative thinking. Our Live Happy reading for today comes from page 89. As we work with this idea of new life, it reads, your body is an amazing temple and it is endowed with the vast intelligence that stands underneath all creation. The order with which it works is so incredible that the simple act of breaking a fingernail will send the signal that deploys and directs the healing agent to begin sending the cells that generate into porcelain. Your body is the temple of the life-giving one. The more fully your concept of your wholeness is in harmony with the life-giving one, the more fully your mind, emotions, and body will allow the radiant health and vitality of God's goodness to flow in, through, and as you. The goal is to ensure that every aspect of your being is attuned to the Spirit of God. The most important healing is found, don't miss this, in the transition from those negative incongruent thoughts and beliefs that become the mental equivalents that produce dis-ease. We must understand that the foundation principle upon which God created is it was good. Then we must work to ensure that our thoughts and beliefs are grounded in this simple truth. You are a child of God and knowing this truth shall set you free from those things that might otherwise limit the expression of your good. Here's the rub. Unfortunately, God does not compel us to claim our birthright. Just like our luggage will ride the carousel until we remove it, you have to step up and claim what is yours. And so what I'd like to do in the time that we have now is really take a look at the blueprint for our birthright. And the first thing I want to encourage you to do as we begin to explore the blueprint is I want to challenge you, I want to encourage you to commit to following the blueprint. If you've ever... Um, seen the beginnings of construction, this um, edifice that we're sitting in, before there was ever uh, a pillar erected, before the foundation was poured, there was a blueprint that was created, Chris, that was intended to give us instruction or give the laborers instruction on what would go where, what it would look like, what the dimensions would be, what the height and length and width and depth would be, so that everyone could be on the same page with respect to what the finished product was supposed to be like. Are you with me? And so when it comes to committing to following the blueprint, I submit to you, and I want to encourage you to put this in your, mo in your notes, that most of life's opportunities are realized when we have the right strategy and the right level of commitment. It's not just the blueprint that's important. The willingness to commit to following the blueprint is also important. Are you with me? And so the blueprint is found, I believe, in a number of places in Scripture, but let's just first go to the creation narrative. When we go to Genesis 1.26, I'm not going to read all of it for you, but I just want to pull out uh, some main points that give us insight into the essence of the blueprint. What's on the pages of the blueprint? 
Genesis 1.26 reads, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Somebody say dominion. Down to uh, verse 28, it reads, God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Somebody say, Be fruitful and multiply. And then down in Um, Verse 31, it reads, God saw everything he made, and indeed, it was very good. And so the blueprint, as it has been established according to the Genesis narrative, is that we are made in the image after the likeness. We have dominion. We're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. And regardless of our nonsense, when what God sees, when God sees us, is good and very good. Are you with me? And so then we move through the scripture and we come to the book of Jeremiah, which reminds us again about the blueprint. And as the prophet introduces the blueprint, he in, um, in verse 29 says, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare, not to harm you, to give you a future with hope. We'll talk, we'll, we'll get to this in a little bit, but I, but I want you to know that part of the blueprint is for us to expand even when we are in exile. We're sp- supposed to grow and stretch and do what God planted within us to do even when we're going through difficulty. See, one of the things that I think we sometimes miss is that being a practicing Christian metaphysician does not mean that you won't go through the storm. It means that you'll have an umbrella as you go through, but it does not mean, it does not exempt us from going through. Life insists that you go through the processes that help you develop your spiritual and soul muscle. There is no escaping the things that you call to yourself as a part of your wholeness regimen. Are you with me? And so the prophet Jeremiah reminds us of the perfection that's found in our divine design. And then we get to the gospel according to Matthew. And then the gospel according to Matthew, we find Jesus going throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogue and proclaiming the good news and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So why is Jesus, Reverend Rod, going through teaching and proclaiming the good news. Jesus, why is he having to cure sickness and disease? It's because sometimes the people of God forget the blueprint, and when we forget the blueprint, we fall off. We say the primary cause of suffering is forgetfulness, and so whenever we forget who we are at our core, that forgetting causes us to have struggles. Are you with me? And so teaching is one of the methods that Jesus used to help the people of God bring forth an understanding of God. Teaching is one of the methods Jesus used to help the people of God reconnect to the blueprint of their innate divinity, but they had to listen, so he taught those who had ears. He said, those who have ears, let them hear. And when you are able to hear the teaching, you're able to experience the the transformation that's inherent within the principle taught. Are you with me? Not Not only did he teach, but he did some healing work. Why do both, right? It's, if you can't just teaching alone take care of it? Why do you also have to do the work of healing? It 
things. I'm sure that Jesus realized if you never heal from what hurt you, you'll bleed all over people who didn't cut you. And so God made us and the divine pattern of greatness and power are in each and every one of us, but sometimes we have to be brought back to the blueprint. And so here is the blueprint. When we understand that the nature of God is absolute good, we can more fully realize the divine pattern by which God created each and every one of us. See, the challenge for many of us is we look at what we've created and we begin to identify ourselves by what we've created. We begin to look at the outpicturing, which, is, which, which I get it, right? Everything in your life, come on, stay with me, God, Everything in your life, you created. That's just truth. That's not, that's not wells, that's truth. Everything in your life, you've created. Now, if the creation is inconsistent with the pattern of perfection, what the healer does and what the teacher does is help us recalibrate what we're creating so that we can stop creating what does not work and begin to create what does work? Are you with me? So the blueprint is that once we understand the nature of God, or once we reconnect to the realization that the nature of God is absolute good, being connected to that influences and infuses my consciousness so I can stop producing stuff that's inconsistent with the nature of absolute good that is God. Right? I don't have to have an issue with you once I understand who you are and whose you are. What's the blueprint? The blueprint is that our thoughts and our feelings are the activities by which we exercise authority and dominion. Let me say that again, Reverend Jackie. Our thoughts and our feelings are the activity by which we exercise authority and dominion. See, many people think that they can just think whatever they want without recognizing and realizing that their thoughts are, in essence, instructing substance. When I think I am sending forth my authority. I'm sending forth my dominion. I'm sending forth my power. I'm just not holding a thought of limitation. I'm creating limitation. Conversely, when I hold the thought, and I, this, this, is, what, this is why I wanted you to connect your breakthrough, your blessing, your increase, your overcoming, your gratitude from the past, something you've already created, I wanted you to put that in the vibration of your feel good on this morning so that you're making a connection between how you feel right now and how good that felt and how good it's going to feel when your thoughts and your feelings bring your next increase, your next prosperity, your next healing, your next breakthrough into your life, world, and affairs. You want to be able to call all of yourself into communion with you. And so we cannot afford God. You cannot afford creator. You cannot afford to be holding thoughts and feelings about stuff, whether that stuff be people or money or your health or diagnosis, you can't afford to be holding a negative vibration 
because that negative vibration is your authority and dominion over creation. See, during the creation narrative, he's give them authority and dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. So whatever, whatever the, the, the fish of the sea represent the ideas. The birds le represent the lofty thoughts. Those are things that we have dominion over. So if my dominion is on the worm, then I create experiences that force me to crawl. Because my thoughts and feelings are the activities by which I exercise my authority and dominion. Are you with me? That's the blueprint. That's, that's how God designed it. And so I want us to be uh, able to commit to the blueprint according to it is in its original design because we are participants in working out that design. And the design is intended. Here is how it's supposed to work. Here is how the blueprint is supposed to work. You ready? The blueprint is supposed to work to help me be fruitful and multiply. That's how it's supposed to work. To help me be fruitful and multiply. Now watch this. Universal law and nature insist that in order to be fruitful, you have to be seedful, right? In order to be fruitful, you have to be seedful. We're not talking about laws that exist outside of the laws that exist. If you want, to, uh, if you want tomatoes to grow in your garden, you have to plant tomato seeds. Is that right? If you want, what's some other stuff you can plant? If you want peas to grow, you have to plant pea seeds. Yes? Well, onions, can you, can you grow onions? If you, want, if you want carrots to grow, you have to plant carrot seeds. Yes? And the seed will always produce in multiplication of what you put in the ground. If you plant one seed, it doesn't give you a one for one where it produces one carrot. It might produce a vine, and that vine might have a number of carrots on it. Is it I don't, I, I, forgive, forgive my ignorance if, if, I, if a carrot doesn't come off a vine. Mm -hmm. I'm a city boy. Through and through. But you get my drift. So the, the blueprint is for us to be fruitful and multiply. But you can't be fruitful if you're not seedful. You with me? Now, what are the seeds? That's the question, yes? What are the seeds? And do I have seeds in abundance. Let me answer the second question first. Do I have seeds in abundance? Unequivocally, yes. And my seeds are my thoughts, which is why I can't afford to think in ways that are inconsistent with my desire to be fruitful and multiply in my good. Because here is the thing, the law will respond to the seed. I can be fruitful and multiply in stuff that I don't want, just like I can be fruitful and multiply in stuff that I do. I, I'm not the only one who knows what it's like to keep running into the same person over and over and over and over and over again and never get anywhere with that person and to continue to project my disappointment on that person when it's not them, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Once I get my seed thoughts right about this outer experience, my seed thoughts will produce a new harvest. So I'm supposed to be fruitful and multiply. But I can't be fruitful if I'm not seedful 
and my seeds are my thoughts. Why is it important to eliminate negative thinking? Because if I have negative thoughts, I will multiply negative experiences. So how are we made? Reverend Coleman taught us again that we are spiritual beings living in a, come on somebody, living in a spiritual universe that's governed by spiritual law. We're spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe that's governed by spiritual law. I get that the majority of the stimulus that we encounter is encouraging us to believe that we are the effect, that we are the outer, that we're our stuff. But you are not your stuff. You are not even your thoughts. You are the spaces in between the thoughts you have. See, that's why your thoughts don't have you. You have your thoughts unless you don't express your authority and dominion. Are you with me? So we're spiritual beings who are living in a spiritual universe that's governed by spiritual law. And so at this stage in your life, you've probably gone through many different iterations and many different stages of who you saw yourself as. But I just want to remind you that the blueprint says that you're a spiritual being made in the image after the likeness of God with authority and dominion and with a blessing and with the charge to be fruitful and multiply because what God made when God made you is good. That's the blueprint. So I want to encourage you to commit to the blueprint. When you find yourself getting outside of yourself, when you find yourself losing yourself, I want you to come back to the blueprint. You don't have to, you don't have to make it up. You don't have to be influenced by the stuff because the stuff comes and goes based upon how you come and go. Would you be surprised how much what we do and how we act how successful we consider ourselves is dependent upon our conditioning and our programs. Stuff that we've received from others and stuff that we reinforce for ourselves. Let me say this to you. I want you to put this in your notes. If there is something that is persisting in your life, I want you to know it's persisting because you're feeding it. If happiness is persisting in your life, it's because you're feeding it. If joy is persisting in your life, it's because you're feeding it. If, whole, if wholeness is persisting in your life, it's because you're feeding it. If healthy relationships are persisting in your life, it's because you're feeding it. If money substance is flowing into your life, it's because you're feeding it. If your kids act like they got good sense, it's because you're feeding them in more ways than one. You're going to get out of here with that crazy, and I'm going to feed you? You're going to get out of here. <laughs> I 
I want to encourage you to do two things as a means by which to um, keep your commitment to your commitment to follow the blueprint. first thing I want to encourage you to do is to consciously recognize that the experiences you draw to yourself, nothing comes to you without your invitation. The experiences you're drawing to yourself, I want you to consciously recognize that those are coming to you to provide you with another opportunity to grow. Right? Don't, don't judge it on the face of what it shows up like. Remember, you have authority and dominion. And your seeds are your thoughts. When you look at what you've created, and you do what we see in the blueprint, when you name it good, even though it might not feel good, it'll begin to take the character of what you name it. Because it has no place outside of the power you give it. Are you with me? And so recognize that you've brought it to you to help you grow. The other thing I want to encourage you to do is to consistently commit to meeting the opportunity the challenge, the blessing, the barrier, according to the principle that'll help you grow in your Christ awareness. Here's what I mean. And you guys know I like the parable of an orange. The parable of the orange says, whenever you squeeze it, Regardless of the setting it's in, regardless of who's squeezing it, whenever you squeeze it, the nature of the orange insists that when you squeeze it, it gives you orange juice. It'll never give you lemon juice. It'll never give you grape juice. It'll never give you lime juice. It'll never even give you grapefruit juice. When you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. But when you squeeze a truth student, what comes out? If we commit to following the blueprint, when life squeezes in on you, truth will leak out. Right? When, when challenges press in on you, when you understand how to consciously recognize that I drew this to me to help me grow, truth will squeeze out. When you understand that the opportunity to demonstrate prosperity is not an obstacle, it's a pathway to help you come to know that God is the source of your supply. So when the bills start to squeeze on you, you want the realization that God is the source of your supply to squeeze out. Because life is going to try you. It's going to get all up in your business. It's going to stop and drop in every class you've taken. It's going to visit every prayer session you gave your attention to, it'll drop in to every counseling session, it'll sit next to you in every service and say, you've been talking about this is who you are and this is what you know, then show me what you about. It's the nature of life to prove the truth that you know. And so scripture says, prove me now herewith. The scripture is about giving. But you can only give what you have. And we've been given the best stuff 
to craft a light that works for us. When life squeezes you, once you get done crying, and once you get done calling around for help, and once you get done being prayed with, and once you come out of your closet, get busy using the truth that you know. Recommit to the blueprint. It'll bless you. Because there's a difference between the blueprint and the builder. The blueprint is not the builder. The blueprint by itself will never produce the end result. It's just the plan for how you do it. But you still, as the builder, have to work it. But we know it works. Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. Thank you, God. And now uh, we have a blessed opportunity said it to you last week and I only say it because I believe it this is one of the very best parts of the service because this is our opportunity to put the law into motion this is our opportunity to be seedful this is our opportunity to give so I want to invite you to prepare your tithe your gift your love offering however you have come prepared to give, share, and sow with this Jesus Christ ministry. If you want to give by text, you can do so by texting CUT to 41444. We bless and give thanks for this opportunity to sow into this Jesus Christ ministry. Let's take a moment to turn within. And I want you to call up the feeling of gratitude. Call it up. Let yourself feel gratitude in this moment. Irrespective of whether or not you are prepared in this moment to give, I want you to feel the gratitude. And as we allow ourselves to be ensconced in the vibration of gratitude, we know that we have so much to thank God for. And we give thanks for another opportunity to bless and share just a portion of the good that you have lovingly blessed us with. The tithe represents 10%. Small in comparison to the overflow of abundance that the Father has for each and every one of us. And the good news is that as we give this seed, it prepares our harvest in the form that we need. And so I am in essence giving into my own increase. I'm giving into my own healing. I'm giving into my own breakthrough. I'm giving in to my own expansion because I'm working the law. And the seed I sow today must show up in my harvest tomorrow. Is that right? Please repeat after me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. I give freely. I give lovingly. My gift returns back to me 
pressed down, shaken together, running over, abundantly so. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. for a new life lesson today. In case you didn't, well, we didn't get to hear the end of that video on women's history. What it said was the legacy lives on. What it said was we've got ministries right here that are grooming those seedlings of truth that you saw all grown up. We've got lessons and ministries that keep doing that in the children's church, in the mentor programs, right, Sandra? So we've got legacy living on. Let's bring our children through that same process. Our reminders, we're opening up. Better Life Cafe is now open on Wednesdays from 9.30 to 2.30, so do drop by. Service groups and interest groups are connecting live. You may start scheduling in-person meeting times for after service. The Live Happy Facebook lessons are every Monday through Friday at noon, or you can watch them at your convenience. They're logged on Facebook. The guest speaker to close out our March calendar is the senior minister of the Universal Truth Center in Miami Gardens, Florida. We know him as the Reverend Charles Taylor. So mark your calendars. So there's always something exciting at CUT, and this month has been no exception. Our benediction, the Reverend Jacqueline Trish Atkins. What a service, huh? What a service. And as we're closing out, I'd like for each woman to just give herself a hand and each man to give a woman a hand in your life, in your world, in your affairs. We're celebrating women all. Well, Reverend said we could do it all the time because one month was just not enough. Anyway, let us right now close out and go forth and live all of this wonderfulness with the uh, prayer protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us wherever. And so it is. God bless each of you. Celebrate, ladies, celebrate. <laughs>